Welcome to our Latin service for April 6th. It is from Richard Rohr's book, Breathing Underwater. And I'm going to be talking about the last two steps, steps 11 and 12. Our passage for today is from Isaiah 38, and it is, You have cured me and given me life. My suffering has turned to health. It is you who have kept my soul from the pit of nothingness. You have thrust all my sins behind your back. The living are the ones who praise you, as I do today. Step 11 is sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand God and praying only for knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry that out. So I found a few examples of prayer for you, and my first one is, Dear Lord, Please don't let my husband be home when all my online orders arrive. Amen. And this one, this should be my prayer. Lord, as I go through the, my day, please keep your arm around my shoulder and your hand over my mouth. Perfect for me, don't you think? And this one. You've probably heard it, but I like it. Dear Lord, so far today I'm doing all right. I have not gossiped, lost my temper, been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or self-indulgent. I have not whined, complained, cursed, or eaten any chocolate. I have charged nothing on my credit card. But I'll be getting out of bed in a minute, and I think that I would really like your help then. What I liked about Richard Rohr's explanation on this step was the first perception of the calculating mind and the second perspective of the contemplative mind. Now don't, don't zone out on me because it's interesting and even I in my simpleness understood and appreciated it. See, the calculating mind sees everything through the lens of its own private needs, our hurts, our angers, and our memories. It's just so small of a lens to see truthfully, wisely, or deeply. We do not see things as we are, but I wait, we do not see things as they are, but we see things as we are. And we think God can help us to get what we want, but really God is helping us to know what we really desire. Because it is work to learn how to pray. It requires us to empty the mind and fill the heart. And prayer is being willing to let God change us. It is a positive widening of your lens for a bigger picture. Because usually when we pray, we pray about our hurts, our needs, and our perspectives. And when we are pray, we are told by Jesus to not babble on like pagans do. And we've all been there, haven't we? I was at my nephew's wedding, and at the reception for the dinner prayer, the pastor went on and on and on. And my mother, who was a bit hard of hearing, heard him pause, and she thought he was done. So she loudly proclaimed, Amen, for all to hear. And the pastor was kind of taken aback, and he said, Well, I guess I'm done. Amen. So how do you pray? Try to pray with quiet and self-surrender, trying to find God in our own struggle with life and let it change us, because he knows what you need. Because watch your thoughts, because they become words, and watch your words because they become actions. Watch your actions because they become habits. And watch your habits, because they become your character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Now step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to sinners and to practice these principles in all of our affairs. What are the principles of step 12, you're saying? They're all good. Honesty, hope, faith with action, courage, integrity, willingness, 
humility, brotherly, sisterly love, discipline, justice, perseverance, spiritual awareness, and service. Now, I absolutely love the book of James, even though Luther calls it the epistle of straw. He wanted to do away with it. But I think James just really tells us how to live and lays it out very clearly. In regards of step 12, James said, if good works do not accompany faith, it is quite dead. Now so think that over for just a minute. If good works do not accompany faith, it is quite dead. And then you have to love this quote by the Dalai Lama. He said, Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. Well, there was an armory that had been turned into a homeless shelter and soup kitchen. And it was clear that the man who managed it just loved what he did. And his enthusiasm really was a bright spot in the day of the people he served. Well, an older gentleman showed up to volunteer, and he asked the manager, how do you do it? How do I do what? The manager replied. The older man said, this place is a reminder of poverty in our country. You've got to know that you're only one person trying to solve a huge problem. The manager answered, I'm just doing my part. I can't do it all but I'm doing my part. And how about the priest in New York State, who when new members would ask to join, he would at the very first meeting say, and for what service group can I sign you up for? He would not accept any excuses, and it was an absolute condition of membership. I found it really interesting that AA has been more successful than most churches and actually helping and changing people because it treats addiction both spiritually and as an illness rather than as a moral failure or an issue of mere willpower. The 12th step in AA is encouraged by all who work the steps, so it ensures that the message of recovery is shared with those who need it with absolutely no conditions or dues. And doesn't that work absolutely with our Christianity. The fact that one cannot keep what he does not give away. That includes our love for Christ, his teachings, his love, his joy, his forgiveness, his grace, and that list goes on and on, doesn't it? Well, here is the 12th step prayer with a little improvisation for Christianity. Dear God, my spiritual awakening continues to unfold. The help I have received I shall pass on and give to others. For this opportunity, I am grateful. I pray most humbly to continue walking day by day on the road of spiritual progress. I pray for the inner strength and wisdom to practice my Christianity in all I do and say. I need you every hour of every day, for this is the better way to live. And as Richard Rohr wrote at the end of his book, with these 12 important breathing lessons, you now know for yourself that you can breathe and even breathe underwater because the breath of God is everywhere. Amen. <laughs>